Hey, Staten Island. This is Health Wish, a conversation about the state of healthcare in the fabulous Fifth Borough. Our aim is to raise issues, raise awareness, and raise health. Because when we raise health, we raise everyone. Today, we're visiting with a self-described ordinary guy who turned a senseless tragedy into a beacon of hope for children with cancer. We're at the spectacular Sharrett's Road home of Joe and Marissa DiMartino to learn how a life taken is giving hope and joy to children of all ages on Staten Island and beyond. Give a listen. Merry Christmas, buddy. Merry Christmas to you too, and the family. Yeah, how you doing? I'm doing okay. It's crunch time trying to get things ready for the big light up, which is Thanksgiving. How many days away are we? Uh, is it three days, I believe? 95% done. Let's do a little more electrical work. So for the people that are watching this that may not know you, could you just introduce yourself? Joe DiMartino. I lost my wife on 9-11, and I turned the tragedy around to something that's so good to help children on Staten Island, pediatrics unit. And every year it just grows and grows and grows, and my goal this year is to make more money than we made the previous years. So your wife, Deborah Ann, um, she was killed in the 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center. You had an idea to keep her memory alive. Tell everybody what the, what the plan was for you to get through this tragedy and help. Well, the year it happened, uh, I used to put lights up, but on a lot smaller scale. And that year I didn't do anything, and I decided to run to my sister-in-law's house, who lived in Florida. And I swore while I was there that uh, this house would never be dark. And from that, I started buying more animatronics, and it just kept growing. And I decided that my wife used to donate to a children's fund, which at that time was St. Jude's. But I wanted to do something for the people of Staten Island, the children of Staten Island. I think at that time it was just Staten Island University Hospital, now it's Northwell Health. But my sister-in-law was a nurse there. It's got to be at least 19 years, if not longer. It's 19 years, yeah. Best 19 years of my life. And we became, we became basically brothers from yep. another mother. Yep. Yeah, and each and every year it's, it's been growing. And from the first year, I remember we had raised $1,600. $1,636. And what we thought that was at that and time, And we right? thought, like... Wow, this is crazy. And they were, they were able to buy these big screen monitors that these kids could, while they're waiting for their treatments, to take their mind off what they're going to be going through. And it was nice. And when I saw that, I said, I got to just got to do more, do more. Then we reached five, then 10, then 20, then 25. And the last big one before COVID, I believe it was 38000 and change. And then last year we did 20, I think it was... 23 or 26,000. I got to hit the 40,000 this month. And to date right now, we've raised around $364,000, close to $365,000 for pediatric cancer research at Staten Island University. So that's, uh, that's something to be very proud of. And I think mm -hmm. Deborah and we are really happy about that. It's a win-win situation. I'm honoring my late wife and uh, we're helping sick children. So what better than that? And we're making a lot of people happy who do come. And if they want to come and not donate, that's also fine too. Everybody's welcome, and just to enjoy the holiday season. It was, from where it was coming from, from that, I'm sorry, that dark day, yeah. to see the light that was going to come out of it, and that's why we call it Lights for Life. It's, we went pretty far, and me and you went pretty yeah. far, because you saw, you saw it grow from the front to the side of the yard, and then you would walk to the side of the yard, and there used to be a gate that you would look in the backyard. Now I had to put ramps so that the wheelchair for the children could get back up in my backyard. I eliminated the steps. I mean, like, it's just, it's so heartwarming to see that something that was such a tragedy, making people smile. You were talking about growing and, you know, how the things have been, and it's... It's an interesting journey for both of us, obviously more for you, but to see you grow for, this, for the man that I met in 2002, didn't really know what to do. You know, he has two young daughters that just lost their mother. Seeing how much this changed you was incredible to me. And, and it, it took years to look back. It needed time to go down that road to see. And then for myself, I've told you many years of like, you know, silly stresses in life. Uh, you know, holidays are coming up, but when you come here, there is something real. There's, there's a real energy, there's a real love, and it does change people. Tell me a little bit about your journey through this. 
as a therapy? This, of course I went to therapy, real therapy, but this was the best therapy I, I could ever have because it, 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 it starts right after September. At, at, at one given point, the early, the early years, uh, I didn't do nothing until after 9-11. You go down to the site and then I start working and it keeps my mind occupied. And that was the best therapy anybody I could give for myself. At that time, my oldest daughter was 12 and my, the baby was five. So I had a lot of family support with the kids and everything, thank God for my family. But I needed to get on track. Uh, my therapist, I never forget, she told me, you have to be strong, you gotta get on track because the way you go is the way your kids are gonna wound up. So that scared me. My kids were my life. And so I had to get myself back on track. It wasn't, it's hard, it's 20 years and it's still hard. I did remarry, but it's still hard. The fact that this all came like natural, like once I started, I, I saw that I really could make a difference. Listen, we're all not gonna be here forever, yeah. but sometimes it's not all about the excitement, which I do love, don't get me wrong, but it's the, the remembrance part. And it's the, the fact that we are helping sick children. It gives me so much joy. And every year that when we come and we present the check, and it's always a, a guess, nobody really knows. And I make my, my wife, Marissa, now, she puts the number in, so it's a surprise. So here I have my, my wife putting in a number honoring my late wife. Which is unbelievable. You, you, That's you, you, incredible. You, you can't put a price tag on that. When, when you met Marissa, I, that was a, another big change for you that I saw. And what a, what, a, what a lovely human being she is. I mean, obviously, that's, you know, tall shoes to step into. You're raising your daughters. She's uh, coming into this scenario. With two with, kids. With two kids. And really, if what I've seen over the years, became their mom. Yeah. Uh, and for her to honor Deborah Ann, I see her shed tears for Deborah Ann every year. Um, it's really, it, it's really unique, it's really special, and I mean, I, I just, that was the greatest, you know, one of the greatest things that's happened to you that one I One of the right. greatest gifts I ever got, I gotta tell you. Tell yeah. me, you know, what does Marissa do here for this operation? I mean, she's taking things to the next level. <laughs> she, Marissa, everything that goes on behind the scenes, she takes care of it. And it, the phone calls come in, she's always on the website, and she's always putting out there what I'm doing, where I am, at what given time of the, of the season, preseason. So she's, anything I need, she's, community she affairs. gives me the sh community affairs. She, <laughs> gives, she gives me the strength to do what I'm doing. Listen, uh, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of work, and, but I love it. It's not, it's, it's, it's a labor of love. And to meet someone who loves Christmas just as much as you. Oh, she's crazy at Christmas. I mean, uh, the tree, you just put <laughs> the tree up and there's, I think she's up to 2,400 light bulbs right now. Um, right now, they're not right finished. Right now, right now. It's not finished. No. We basically transformed this whole house into a little winter wonderland. Come right after Thanksgiving, it's nice in here. So let's talk about the ride. I mean, this really became a destination spot for Staten Island across the city. We've been in, uh, now I to like to say, I'm saying we, because obviously I feel like I'm part of the you team, are part, part of the family. Of my family. But a lot of citywide challenges, we came really high in those. Where have we gone with this? What was the greatest one that you've been, a new spot or a celebration or recognition that you've been a part of? <sighs> recognition. Well, I would have to say when Lou Tobacco gave me uh, one of the awards. Oh, the, the assembly. The, the assembly yeah. assemb from uh, Otto. Oh, yeah. He the presented the, that. Yeah. You had the, the Lights for Life Day. The Lights for Life Day. Uh, then we had the proclamation. You think the biggest recognition is when there's, like a Thomas Celitano, there's another boy that comes up who has Down syndrome. And tell me that story. Again, this is behind the scenes, and they reach out to my wife, and we make, there is this kid that's got Down syndrome, and every year he comes, and he, he loves being with Santa, like it's so excited. So now I go get a little something special for him so that when the kids come, Santa gives out candy canes. When, when, when this young boy comes, uh, he gets a gift at each and every year. And when you see his eyes light up and how exciting, all the money in the world can't put a price on it. It's just, it's so genuine. You know, I get a lot of people throughout the season. I'm always getting hugs. Thank you, thank you so much. I just lost my father, my mother, and sometimes I'll get 
I just lost my daughter or son to, to leukemia. And it just, they're hugging me, and I, and I cry with them because it's, but they're here with their other children, and they're getting through what I went through, not on that scale, because I can't imagine losing a child. And, and they come, and, and I'm putting joy to their family. They're happy. I'm, I'm making them happy. So yeah. it's and, all good. And everybody's pain is different. Yes, uh, there's no, there no same pain. Yeah. So obviously, you, you help a lot in community. Um, it's a really good segue, I feel like, to talk about community partners that have helped you uh, along the way. Who's, who's been a real big help with this in the past few years? I would have to say, first and foremost, uh, Marcello from the Island Auto Group. I mean, this corporation has been phenomenal. Each and every year, they match the first $2,500 we make. And I believe they've been on board now for like six years. Mm -hmm. And last year, because we couldn't go into the hospital, we went into their car dealership. And I'm all excited because they're going to present the check, so which brings my number up. And lo and behold, Marcello reached out to corporate, and corporate matched another $2,500. So last year, they donated $5,000 and brought up to $26,000 and change. And besides all that, now on his lots, I have one of my trailers. I have a 40-foot storage container and a 20-foot storage container. I used to pay $350 a month for, to store this stuff. Not only is it giving me this first $2,500, I'm saving $350 a month. Which now, I'm taking to buy more stuff. Yeah. It might sound crazy, but that's what I'm doing. And it frees up a lot of space here, because walking around the house, you have things stowed away everywhere. Yeah, I got the, the garage is fully packed. There's yeah. no room. You got the basement, and then you got the storage containers. So with the animatronics, how did you link up with Lou Nasty? He's one of the predominant animatronic makers, particularly for Christmas. The strangest thing, I always knew about him. And one day I'm outside, and a young girl comes over to me. She goes, you know, my father makes stuff like this. I said, who's your father? Lou Nasty. But she says, give my dad a call. She had a business card. And I reached out to her. And lo and behold, when I went to his shop, I mean, it's incredible what he got. And it's like I know him 100 years. He's the greatest guy. Geppetto. Yeah, he looks like Geppetto. This year we have a new piece. I wanted something that was substantial because we did hit the 20th anniversary. I, I, I believe the kids and, and the grown-ups are really going to be happy with this piece. It's a lot of moving parts. Don't ruin it. So I they, they need to come. Because everything Lou makes, it's unique. So like the toy shop and the bake shop and all these things. like. And it's all handmade. Yes. It's not. It's all handmade. And he's, he's just phenomenal what he does. And if you look at the work that he does, he does work all around the world. And my neighbors, I, I can't get better neighbors than what I have over here. I mean, because besides the nights that Santa's here, it, it gets very hectic. There's lines waiting to get in the backyard because I got to... You know, control the amount of people at any given time. But sometimes the lines can get down the block to four or five houses down the block. And my neighbors, they're just great with it. I mean, I mean it's a tall order because sometimes we have to have community affairs come. Yes, they do come. And in Santa nights, we get the auxiliary police department, which is a great help. Kids crossing the streets back and yeah. forth. You know, it's like a community effort. It ain't, it ain't just me putting up the lights. It's it's all of us. Yeah, but what you, it's all of us making a change. For the community. No, 100%. You know. That's a huge deal for people that don't understand. You do yeah. not take a single dollar. The electricity nothing. is out of your pocket. You don't take right. that off the top. Nothing. You take nothing off nothing. of the top. Nothing. And if you think that there's anybody coming in to make a name for themselves from this, I've seen it. I turned them down. Yes, I could get some more money for the hospital, but you, we're moving away from why it's being done. I, I hate to go down this road. We didn't talk about it before, but, but 9-11. How did you hear about what was happening? I, at the time, I was working for Pepsi, and uh, I came home. I worked a night shift, 11 to 8. I came home, I went downstairs. My mom had just got the, the kids ready for school. Debbie was already at work, and my mom puts the TV on. She goes, look, a plane just hit the building. I said, is that Debbie's building? No, no, I was on, I'm on the phone with her. I said, I got on the phone with Debbie. I'm talking to her, and I said, get out. And she was a trader, and they were worried about the marketing opening. And the support floor below her, they left right away, but the traders stayed. And because they thought it was just a freak accident. But I said, get out. But the Port Authority, she she hold the phone away from me. And she said, please remain calm, because the debris from the first building coming down, they don't want people to come out and get 
kill some debris for him. So while I was on the phone with her, uh, I'm watching a lot of plane come. The plane hit below where she was. And we lost contact. And miraculously, I would have to say maybe a minute later, she called me up and she says, what just happened? My whole building just shook. And I, I won't want to use the words that I said, but I says, get, the, get out of there. Get out. She goes, hey, I love you. I'm leaving everything behind. They're taking us to a secure room. And that was the last thing she ever told me. And this is what I live with. So people say, ah, it's 20 years. It, it doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. Birthdays come, Christmas come, the mother of my children are on here. And I relive it every single year. But I love you. I'm leaving everything behind. And then miraculously, four years later, they discovered some remains. So now I had to have a whole ceremony all over again. First we had the memorial, of course, like everybody did. And then we had to bury her. Well, whatever we found, which I won't disclose, they scarred me and my family for the rest of my life. But I did remarry. What a wonderful woman. I told people I got lucky twice in life. You did. And you're raising two incredible, incredible women. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, this is, this is where we are. So now I just, like I was telling you earlier, Chris, my dad says the clock doesn't stop ticking. And I always keep that in the back of my head. And I just look forward. And I, and I just keep doing what I can do. And as long as God gives me the strength, we're going to raise money for this hospital to the day I die. And I'll be there with you every step of the way. You have me f for life because it's, it's more than work. It's, it's brotherhood. It's mission-driven. This is something that's affected all of us in a million ways. But you've guided me through a lot in my life and particularly with my kids. And, you know, you're a role model for me, even though we're like brothers, but just seeing what you've been able to do through the the most difficult time in your life, in this country's history, uh, was completely inspirational to me. And it's not really just a metaphor, it's the truth about just bringing light to these situations of what this place does. I come here, I'm different, people are different, and uh, it's been incredible what you've been able to do here. Um, and I just, I commend you for everything that you've done here. It's, it's absolutely unbelievable, and I thank you for that. You're more than welcome. We have to shoot for the stars. We'll do good to do better. We got to hit 40,000 40, this year. 40,000, right? Talk to the camera. Tell them. $40,000 this year I have to hit. That's the goal. But then next year we got to go a little higher. But we're going to hit the 40. You have to realize that $40,000 in one month from 5 to 11, that's when the money comes in. And then last year we did the, the Venmo, which was phenomenal. I mean, it's... I, 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 I'm outside, man, in the line, and, and all of a sudden my phone is making noises. My wife said, oh, more money for the kids. Like, it, it's, it's all good. Well, speaking of kids, uh, I'm going to put on my Santa hat here because okay. why not, right? There you go. Um, to close out this episode, there was uh, a little something that was done on pediatrics, on the pediatric floor for you. And there's also something under the tree for you here. Oh. And this is from the, the, the kids at the Department of Pediatrics. And there's a note in there. And they had made some, some decorations for you. So take a look. Aww. What is it? Oh my god, how beautiful. So these are all made by the kids in Miss Vivian's playroom. So all ornaments. Oh, how these are going on my tree. I wish Marissa was here. <laughs> 2,500 more lights, and these will be on. Oh, how beautiful. So, a Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. You know what I think and I might names, do with these? Some of the names are on there, too. The I think I might find a place for them in the display so everybody can see them. That's a great idea. 
Yeah, these are going to go in this display. Thank you. Thank you with all my heart. My friend, Merry Christmas. Thank you for everything you've done for, for us, for me. I'm totally different after meeting you, and uh, I, I just, you got me forever, and I love you. And Merry Christmas. Love you too. Merry Christmas. HealthWish wishes to thank Joe and Marissa DiMartino for the love and passion they bring to the fight to eradicate pediatric cancer. You can support their effort right now by scanning the QR code on your screen or by visiting Lights for Life on Facebook. That's Lights, the number four, Life on Facebook. Thanks for watching HealthWish. We hope to see you again soon.